What is up, everyone? It is T5 from Swatchy here. Today, we are going to be learning about data types in CV2, and we're going to be creating a simple math question. We're using some of the things such as event standards, receivers, and event definitions from the last video to do these things. So, I hope you guys know that, and if you don't, go back and review that video and then come back to this one. Let's get started. Okay, guys, so first, I'm going to take you guys through the data type. Um, by using the variables of the data types. So let's see. Um, we'd actually have to do this. Um, quick tip for you guys to uh, see what you want to see. Like if, like if you want to see variables, you can just like use this tab on CV2. And these are all the variable types. So we have variable bools, which is like true or false. So yeah, bools are like either true or false. Um, you could set those. There's a variable float, which is a float point value. It's a number. You have an int, which is also a number. You have a, um, let's see. You also have a player, um, which is also a variable. You have a string, um, which is like any like thing that you can type in, like a name or anything like that. And you have many things like a quaternion. We'll be getting into these much later. Quaternions are pretty advanced. A vector three, um, which is like x, y, and z values. Um, and then we have the same things, um, but on list values, and we'll be talking about list, uh, I think, um, that's your fourth. So, yeah, um, now, let's get started into the math questions. Alright guys, so to start off this math question, we're gonna need three event definitions. So I'm gonna start off by making those. Oh uh, god, this is, this is gonna take a pain to load, hold up. It's loading. Okay, and then this one. So, um... Now we have it for three event definitions, and I'm gonna name this one right here. I'm just gonna name it question. As in math question. Uh, let me submit that. That's a habit I keep forgetting to submit. Make sure to submit. And then we're gonna do um, correct. And, oh god, what the heck? Sorry about that. And um, we're gonna submit, and we're gonna do incorrect. It. And now we have our three event definitions. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use an event sender. So if you remember from last video, um, event sender, or last lecture, sorry, event sender is used for custom commands and sending out the custom commands. So what we're going to use here is we're going to send out question. And when we send out question, we're going to use our event receiver and we're going to receive question. If you don't remember any of this, please go watch last lecture again. And a question. Okay, so now we're gonna output the code that we want to happen when we um, receive questions. So the code that we want is going to be a prompt local player. Now this is new for you guys. Um, let's see, prompt local player. So what a prompt local player does is it basically gives you a watch notification showing a prompt. So. Here's how it's gonna look. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna say prompt, and this is gonna say, uh, what's this gonna say? This is gonna say, what? What the heck? Sorry, I guess. What is one plus five? Let's just do one plus five. And then we're gonna put in here for the like. This is the placeholder text. We're gonna put an sir. And now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use something called a parse flow. Now, what this does, sorry, there it goes. What this does is, this change this a parse, right here. Um, it, it parses this string and changes it into a flow. So in simple terms, it changes a string into a flow. So now what we're gonna use is, we're gonna use a equals, and this equals, this equals is gonna be right here, and we're gonna say this equals six. Sorry, I've got used to doing one plus one. If that equals six, so now we need something that's new, also called a if. So right here, we're gonna get an if, and we're saying if. Okay, we also need to have complete, so we need to wire this thing up. Um, we're basically saying if this is completed and we it equals six, then we're gonna use another event sender. And we're going to tell it to send out, um, hold up, sorry about that, what the heck, so, okay, we're gonna tell it to send out, um, let's see, 
we're gonna tell it to send out correct. So basically, we're saying right here, this is the logic. Um, if we're asking what what is one plus five, and we're putting in the placeholder for answer, and then we say if the response is equal to six by parsing the string and making it is saying if it is if it's equal to six, sorry. <gasps> um, if it's completed with the response of six which is false because we haven't entered anything yet, it's going to send out correct if it has the response of six. Now else. So if else, you guessed it, we are going to make it incorrect. So we're going to send out incorrect. All right. Okay. But now we don't have any code for correct and incorrect. So as you guys already may or may not know, we're going to use another event receiver. So first we're going to use an event receiver for correct, um, okay. And right here, we're going to say show notification. You guys already know show, no show notification, I showed that in my last video or last lecture. And we're going to do that, and that. And we're going to say that this um, is, we're just going to say your answer is correct. With the exclamation mark at the end. Okay. So, oh, oh wait, we forgot to do correct. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. So we're gonna just do correct. Okay. So basically, we're saying now we're sending out correct. So when we send out correct, the event receiver is gonna receive that we sent out correct, and it's gonna show the notification that our answer is correct. So now, um, what we're gonna do next is we're going to do, let's say. Let's do, um, whatever, let's do, um, okay, so, let's use an event receiver. And we're gonna do incorrect. We have nothing else to do. Sorry, I paused. Okay, there you go. So, now, we're gonna just show this notification. Your answer is, just put incorrect. This is a pain. Okay. In correct. And we're going to say try again. Okay. Um, so now we have your answer is correct. Try again. So now we need a way to activate this. And I'm going to be using a button. Uh, you can use anything. You could use a test event or anything like that. Um, but I'm going to be, sorry, this is the button V1. We're going to be using a button V2. And we're going to do press. You don't have to worry about any of this other stuff. You just need to worry about press. And um, we're going to say um, 1 plus 5. That's what I'm going to name this. 1 plus 5. Okay. So now we have 1 plus 5. And if we press this, what is 1 plus 5? Okay, so I'm just going to type a wrong answer. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, well, I guess it's still wrong. I'm going to actually type a wrong answer this time. Let's type 32. So it's incorrect. But if this equals 6, your answer is correct. So it's as simple as that, guys. Um, These are, um, this is the logic to it. Really not that hard. And yeah, guys, that's all for today's tutorial. Um, Logic's really not that hard on this stuff. Pretty easy to learn. Alright guys, this video might have been shorter than the last one. I'm sorry about that. I don't know because I haven't checked the footage yet. But if it is, I'm sorry about that. Okay. In the next lecture, we'll be learning about lists and what you can do with them. Lists are very useful, so I hope you guys are ready for that tutorial. And yeah, that's all for today's lecture. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.